Okay, let's start with, uh, continue with slide 15 on endochondrial bone formation. And uh, starting with 8 to 12 weeks, perichondrion, we have uh, hyaline cartilage. And most of the bones in the body start with hyaline cartilage. Then uh, there's a uh, de deteriorating cartilage matrix, fetal period, and a primary ossification center in the middle of the bone. Then later on, there's a secondary ossification center in the epiphyses and uh, uh, continuing primary ossification center in the diaphysis. And both those work at the same time. And in the middle, we have this cartilage uh, that's growing that allows bones to grow larger. Longer, I should say. So slide 16, you can see as a child, you have this, uh, uh, the, uh, Epiphysis growing on one side of the, of the epiphyseal plate, and the uh, primary ossification center growing from the diaphysis on the other side of the epiphyseal plate. And the epiphyseal plate allows the bone to grow larger. And in late teens to adult, under the influence of, of uh, uh, sex hormones, the epiphyseal plate will ossify, become the epiphyseal line, and you are not getting any taller. That's it, and that's what. Uh, and now, uh, and you can tell that um, uh, a person how old a person is by their bones, if their epiphyseal plates have closed or not. Slide seventeen is the opposite: the appositional growth, growth from the inside out, thicker and stronger bones as you grow older and older, and even as an adult. The more you stress the bones, remember Wolf's Law, the stronger, the thicker bones become. So this is slide 18. Remember the physiology of uh, osseous tissue, mineral deposition, solubility product. As I mentioned before, you don't uh, want uh, calcium and phosphate to be in a high concentration in the same area. When osteoblasts want to make bone, they let calcium comes in, come in. There's lots of phosphorus inside uh, cells, very little calcium, and then you can lay down bone. But you don't want that where uh, you don't want to make bone where you don't want it, and that's called ectopic ossification. You know, just acid phosphatates help dissolve bone to resorb in, uh, uh, hydroxyapatite, and that's what the uh, um, osteoclasts use. So remember, bone remodeling depends upon the stress put on a bone. Uh, and uh, I always give the example of astronauts who go up into space. Uh, if they don't exercise when they're up there, they come down losing a lot more bone than they went up there with because in, with no gravity, there's no stress on bone. Same thing with muscle. They lose muscle as well. And it's detected by osteocytes. And as you grow older, you have a natural loss of bone with age called osteopenia. It's not osteoporosis, which we'll talk about later on, but a natural loss of bone with age. So hormones affect bone growth. Growth hormone stimulates somatomedium medium from liver, which stimulates bone growth. Thyroid hormone increases metabolism, which increases bone growth. Sex hormones, uh, growth, uh, in the, uh, but also the end of growth at the end of puberty. And glucocorticoids actually inhibit growth. Calcium homeostasis, calcium exchange between plasma and bone, exchangeable and exchangeable calcium. Some calcium can be put into blood, others, uh, other calcium cannot be. Hypocalcemia, too low blood calcium, will lead to hyperexcitability of nerve cells. Hypercalcemia, which is uh, too much calcium, will lead to hypoexcitability. Slide 20, calcium homeostasis. Calcitriol, vitamin D. Raises blood calcium by actions on small intestine to increase more calcium absorption, kidneys to lose less uh, calcium in your kidneys, and skeleton to take more calcium from your skeleton by stimulating osteoblasts. Calcitonin lowers blood cal calcium by inhibiting osteoblasts and stimulating osteoblasts. And finally, parathyroid hormone from the thyroid gland raises blood calcium by its effect on the skeleton and the kidneys. Does not affect the intestines. And phosphate homeostasis is not as critical. It's 
raised by calcitriol with more calcium and uh, phosphate go in the opposite direction. The more calcium you absorb, the more phosphorus you lose. The more phosphorus you absorb, the more calcium you lose. Bone disorders, I'm not going to go into too much. It says fractures and helium fractures, and I'm not going to go into helium fractures all that much because I didn't put up slides for that, so I'm not worried about that. That's not going to be on the exam. Osteoporosis is something that is a common bone disorder, and estrogen inhibits osteoclasts. So when you lose estrogen in menopausal women, this stimulates osteoclasts, and it breaks down bone. And this, this happens also in men, but it's a much more serious problem in, uh, in, in postmenopausal women. And so estrogen uh, replacement therapy uh, can help with this.